All right, welcome back everybody. Here's a project you have not been introduced yet to. Uh, this is my 2003 Miata. Um, it's pretty much all stock. It's got a 1.8 liter with a five-speed manual behind it. And I've had this thing for about four or five years now. Um, in the last couple years, it's just been kind of sitting in my garage. I haven't had much time to drive it or really enjoy it. Partially because there's no real fun canyon roads here in Texas. And the other part would be that my commute is so far every day that driving a car like this uh, would just become more of a hassle than anything. But being that we are relocating to a new location, um, got a big shop to reveal in the future, uh, we're prepping this thing for a cross country road trip. So I trust it. It's been, it's been across the country with me twice now. And you know, I've had no major issues with it, but since it has been sitting, we're gonna do a quick tune up on it. Uh, kind of go over some, you know, stuff like fluid changes, valve cover gaskets, how to prep your car for a road trip, and uh, then we'll go from there and see how it does. All right, so quick rundown on the car. Um, this is a 2003 Miata with uh, LSD in the back, um, naturally aspirated four cylinder, 142 horsepower claim stock. Um, only modifications I've done to this car are a small header and it's got some exhaust that was on it whenever I bought it. Uh, the rest of the stuff I did is in the interior of the car. Uh, this thing is about uh, 185,000 miles. It runs great. Uh, fifth gear is on its way out as are most Miatas about this time and age. So let's take a look at the inside and I'll show you what these mods are that I've done to it. So I've got a Nardi steering wheel with a Boss hub. I've done some uh, matching wood grain shift knob and brake levers. I did uh, some custom vinyl wrap door panels. I thought these looked really cool and they kind of give me some more leg room. I'm actually missing my door strap on this side, so got to fix that. As we move in here, you can see on the inside, I've actually had quite a few more touches like my retro sound stereo. Looks pretty period correct. I've done some rev limiter window switches as well as rev limiter gauges tucked behind my KG Works cluster here. I really enjoy driving these cars. It's a very nice place to be. And uh, besides some new seats, these are kind of ripping. Uh, I think I really do enjoy this car on the inside. It is really is a nice place to be. It just needs to be cleaned up and driven more often. So here's what we're going to address on this thing today. Uh, we've got a new absorb glass matte battery to throw in there, a little bit smaller than the stock one, but should still do a pretty good job uh, based on what I'm seeing on the forums online. We've got a valve cover gasket to throw on, and then we're gonna change the oil, change the trans fluid, including the turret, and then the diff fluid as well. So let's go ahead and prep for that work. love this tool. This is the uh, M12 fuel impact driver. Uh, David actually got this for me. It's got some pretty good power to it. Uh, it's giving me no problems taking out this old strut bar. If we look in here, we can see that I got the valve cover off and surprisingly for the mileage on this car, it looks pretty good in here. Um, I've done my best to try to keep up with the maintenance on this car and uh, really hasn't given me any issues at all besides that fifth gear in the trans. And uh, we'll see if this this uh, fluid swap that I do has any benefit to that. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and get this thing all cleaned off on the surface place that gasket and throw it back together.
right, now that that's all done, we addressed a couple of things that I thought were leaking. In the back, there's a small uh, cam seal that sits underneath the rear cam cap. And that was leaking pretty profusely, so I cleaned up the area, uh, got some brake cleaner on there, and uh, gave it a small dab of these, this uh, the right stuff, this gasket maker. Probably not the right thing to do, but it's gonna work for now since I have to get this thing on the road in a couple days. Um, but other than that, next thing is gonna be actually waiting for some fluids to come in. We've got two quarts for the transmission and one for the rear diff that we're waiting on. And then I'm gonna get this thing an oil change as well. So once those parts come in, we'll pick back up on this video. And so I'll see you then. All right, so it's day two here on uh, getting the Miata back on the road. Just wanted to kind of show y'all underneath the car here. Um, it's not that bad. We got some rusty bits like on the exhaust. Um, you know, this is probably the worst of it, but you know, what are you gonna do? The rest of the car though, it looks pretty good. There's not much rust under there. And uh, right here you can see I've got some uh, some ST coilovers. I've got some, uh, I can't remember who made these. I don't know, somebody got some adjustable end links for my, for my sway bar. And uh, the rest of the car under here is pretty much all stock. So first thing we're gonna tackle is this differential right here. Um, so you got your fill plug and you got your drain plug. Definitely make sure when you're doing this, you crack up the fill plug first. You'd hate to drain all this stuff out and then find out that you're not able to fill it back up. So we're gonna go ahead and do that real quick. Um, I've got some Redline 75W90 that I'm gonna throw in there. It only takes about a quart. Um, so let's just go ahead and get set up and start doing that. I imagine this is going to be pretty gross. Oh, yeah. It smells awful. Uh, I forgot how much I hated the smell of gear oil. And this stuff is coming out like, like tapioca. Oh, God. Probably should have done this sooner, huh? It's coming out chunky. This is the nastiest thing I've ever seen. Um, Folks, don't be like me and wait till the last minute to uh, change your diff fluid. No telling how long this thing was uh, gonna last without doing this. Okay. Now, normally, um, you know, I take this to professional to have it done, but because of the state of that differential, I'm gonna put in some of this uh, spare liquid molly I have on the shelf. Same viscosity, it's a GL5 rating, so it's fine for the differential. I'm gonna run it for a little bit, and then I'm gonna drain it back out, put in the red line I wanted. I'm doing that just to ensure I get any of that nasty crap that uh, I neglected to drain a long time ago. I'm gonna get it out, put some new stuff in, and uh, see if that does anything better for us. All right, we got this thing running right now. Uh, I've just got the uh, car in first gear. I'm gonna let it run for a bit. I'm checking for leaks up here in my valve cover. Uh, everything is looking good so far. Initially, I had a leak right here coming from the top of this and on the back side of the motor, but it all looks pretty good right now. So we're gonna bring it up to temp and then shut her back down and uh, drain that fluid out of the back again, move on to the transmission. We're all finished under here. Got it tightened up. I filled it up until it started pouring out of the top. That's your tell once the car's on flat level ground that it's full. Uh, so let's go ahead and move to the front and start working on this transmission fluid. Okay, so while I got you all under here, um, I just wanna go ahead and point out where the trans fill and drain is. So down here, oh, this is tight. at the back of your trans, kind of underneath, where the shifter turret connects, you'll see the uh, drain plug. That's a 24 millimeter. And if you go up on the driver's side, up to where the bell housing meets, you'll see there's a square bolt there um, and actually a 14 millimeter wrench will slip right over that and you can take it off that way. Some people recommend using the eight point or the square bits, but a uh, 
yeah, a normal open end wrench will take that off no problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Won't really get this on camera because it is very tight down here. And so let's go ahead and do it. Okay, we are back from getting the drain and the fill bolt out. Uh, remember that top one, you can use a 9 16th open end wrench and this bottom one is a 24 mil. So uh, with this, ensure that you take off the top bolt first. Um, just like the differential, you don't want to drain it out if you can't fill it back up. So uh, once I got this thing out, I did take a look and you can see there's some, you know, trans synchro material. I mean, this is not too uncommon, especially in a higher mileage transmission. So I don't think it's anything to be too concerned about. The fluid looked pretty good when it came out. Um, this transmission does have a, a fifth gear uh, grind, you know, at pretty much any speed. So um, this is probably mostly fifth gear synchro. Uh, but, you know, nothing too alarming. I don't see any big chunks of metal anywhere. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and throw this back in, get it filled back up with the same procedure, this time using some Motul 300. And I will see you guys once I'm done doing that. All right, we have got the inside taken apart. We got the dash, the center console removed, and we've exposed the turret here. Uh, now what we're going to want to do is pop off these four bolts on top. They are 12 millimeter, and that'll give us access to the inside of the turret. Um, now there's not necessarily a drain. Some people pull the detents out, um, but what I'm gonna do is just take my little pump and pump out the nasty stuff, get in there with some brake cleaner and uh, clean it out as best as possible with that in a rag, and then fill it back up with uh, some of that red line. All right, so now we can see down inside the turret here. I uh, apologize if my phone is giving you guys a bad view. The camera's kind of dirty, I might wipe it off. Yeah, that might be a little better. So what we're gonna do is continue to use my little pump. We're gonna pump out the rest of the stuff, get in there with some brake cleaner, uh, just get it as clean as possible and then pour in some new red line. Uh, it specifies about 85 to 95 milliliters. All right, well, about a dozen nasty rags and some brake cleaner later, we are looking pretty good in there. So what I'm gonna do is check out the manual, see exactly what this specifies. I believe it says GL4 or GL5 fluid between 85 to 95 milliliters. So. That's what I'm gonna do. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and get some uh, some of the right stuff gasket maker on here, reseal up the turret and start adding that fluid. All right, so we've got our 85 to 95 milliliters of that Redline GL5 in there. Put some grease all over the uh, lower ball in the bushing assembly so we can slide that in there and button this up and see how it feels. All right, so this is all put back together. Shifter feels great. Uh, I've got the differential fluid changed, the trans fluid changed, also changed the fluid in the turret. What we're gonna do now is take it out on the road, uh, drive it around for a little bit, let it get warmed up, and then we're gonna change that oil and the engine. So drain that out, throw some 5W40 in there, or 10W30, I don't remember what the spec is, but I'll get back to you on that. And uh, she should be ready to go for this trip. All right, well, we're just about out of daylight. Um, so far, I got that differential, the transmission, uh, and the turret all drained and refilled with new transmission fluid. Uh, now we're going to drain this engine oil, put a new filter on it, get it topped off, and then drop this thing on the ground so I can have it ready for me tomorrow morning. That's gonna do it. Tomorrow, I'm gonna get up bright and early, swap these tires around, and get this thing on the road. So, I got about mm, 1,400 miles in front of me, so I gotta get some good rest tonight. Uh, but that's gonna do it for now, so we'll catch you guys in the next one. Coffee mugs, shot glasses.